Awesome. Welcome in, guys. Welcome to another Loophole Live. I'm your host, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we got a cool topic to talk about today. Well, one, we're going to talk about custom shop a little bit, but before we get into that, there's a couple things going on. We want to make sure that you get the chance to get one of these awesome targets. Um, actually, JR and I went out and shot a round of this uh, the other day, pistol, which I am not undefeated anymore. He did beat me at, uh, what was that, 12 yards, I think? Yeah, yeah it was about 12, yeah, yards. 12 yards. So um, if you want one of these, uh, they're super fun. Go on to loophole.com, uh, submit a review, and if you submit a review, we'll send you a pack of targets. It's that easy. Um, and like I said, they're, they're, they're super fun. It, uh, it makes going to the range a little more interesting, maybe some uh, you know, uh, 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 healthy rivalry between uh, some buddies, right? And um, it's also actually a really good precision drill. If you're working on really good trigger press and trying to place your shots really precisely, it's actually a really good drill for that too. Helped me a ton with side alignment and side picture. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I didn't introduce him, but this is JR. Uh, so JR, uh, you work in the custom shop, right? I um, do. On the sales side? Yeah, I'm with the uh, custom shop sales and basically answer phones, take orders, make sure all the dials and everything are getting taken care of. Right. So when you call 100 loophole, do you choose custom shop? You might be talking to JR, uh, unfortunately or fortunately. for It depends on what mood you're in, right? <laughs> so how long have you been with loophole? Uh, so it'll be four years in December. Okay, cool. And you started out in the tech service uh, department, right? I did. I started on the tech service side of the house answering uh, phone calls about... Yeah you know, product knowledge and different uh, applications for our scopes. Yeah. And then, um, you know, transferred down to the custom shop when the opportunity arose itself and been there ever since. Actually, I hired him into the custom shop, so it's my fault he works in the custom shop. So. It's also your fault that you <laughs> left the custom shop. <laughs> no, no. I got, I, I, have a, I have a place in my heart for custom shop. And that's actually why we, we wanted to talk about today, that today. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff. We're kind of going to have a free for all. So if you guys have questions uh, that you've been wondering about, uh, it doesn't matter what topic it is, we're going to try to answer them. But we're also going to talk a little bit first about the custom shop, what they do. Um, I, it really, to me, again, I got a place in my heart for it uh, since I, I, I ran it for a number of years. But it, it, it that lets us set ourselves apart from other manufacturers. The reason we can have a custom shop and that we can do this stuff is because we're making stuff here in the factory. We're making the parts, we're putting the scopes together. And so because of that, we can take a custom order and say a customer wants a different reticle or something like that. Um, we, can, we can make that happen, right? Yeah, absolutely. For instance, I mean, right here, you've got a Mark 6, 3 to 18. Uh, normally anybody can Cerakote a scope. Uh, our scopes don't void warranties or anything like that if you mm -hmm. sort of code them as long as you keep them you know underneath the uh, the specified temperature you rattle can scope too yeah, I mean absolutely. Be spray paint or whatever, whatever. Yeah. but for instance one of these is taken we start with just the bare aluminum before the scope is ever actually uh, put together we get that Cerakoted and then we bake that at the prescribed temperature which could be upwards of like 480 degrees. Yeah, I don't know what, yeah. Maybe if any of you guys know what uh, any Cerakoters out there, tell us what the temp is. It's way it's too hot. high. It's hot. It'll burn, it'll, it'll burn out all the parts inside of a scope. So that's why we don't build the scope and then Cerakote it. Yeah. But yeah. what that allows us to do is basically bring that scope in. Once we get it, we assemble it afterwards and then we can re-engrave all the engravings. So you get, you know, you mm -hmm. get a scope that's already Cerakoted all the engravings are marked on there yeah and it looks like it's it's a factory scope yeah so that's one cool thing that we've been offering in the custom shop we do we do a bunch of different and it doesn't always have to be this like fancy uh, of a color or something uh a pink dp pro right <laughs> uh it could be as simple as a reticle change it could be simple as a dial change on there now within reason right we can't always take uh, uh there there are limitations i can't take a a front focal reticle and put it in a rear focal scope or there's certain adjustments that won't work on certain scopes so um, that's you, you know sometimes guys will come to us with their wish list right and they want they want a scope yeah, so and like yeah well we, we can do some of that we can't do all of it so you know it's it's kind of like uh, think about we have a custom shop web builder if you go to the custom shop yeah, online that's a great point um you can go on there it's a configurator you can basically type in different parts and pieces that'll fit into your scope and those all work out for you. Um, it's kind of like when you order, uh, when you're looking at buying a new car, you go to Toyota's website or somebody's yeah. website, yeah. and you get to configure that. Yeah. Now, you can't put the engine of a Prius into a Tacoma. <laughs> it won't allow you to do that. I really want that, um, though. 
even though Toyota <laughs> makes both of those cars, you just can't do that. Same uh, thing here. You know, um, certain reticles have to subtend correctly. And so there are reticles that just will not work inside of another scope. They're not built for that. And so we're constantly upgrading the amount of reticles that we have and we're, mm -hmm. we're always building more reticles so that we can cover that line. But yeah. unfortunately we can't do everything. Yeah. So what we have available in, you know, at the moment is yeah. basically, you know, the parts that fit in those scopes, we can rearrange it, change colors, we yeah. can do certain things. Um, but, you know, we have that capability. That, uh, that Toyota analogy is really good. We both drive Toyotas. Yeah, Would you drive an electric Tundra? I don't know if I drive an electric mm. uh, Tacoma. I want, I'm, I'm holding out for the diesel. I, uh, Hopefully yeah. my truck will last long enough that they make a diesel Tacoma. Well, or yeah. I, I got to figure out, any, anyone out there imports Hiluxes, maybe uh, maybe send me a DM yeah. or something like that. Somebody let us know. <laughs> we're, we're totally waiting on that Hilux to come yeah. over. So again, uh, just going over some of the stuff. So we also do custom laser engraving too, which is pretty neat. Uh, so anything from uh, maybe you want uh, Teddy Roosevelt on the uh, uh, top of your dial there. I mean, we got a lot of cool designs. Um, we, we have a, a, a number of different animals we can do, but we also do custom designs too. Um, if you have a company or a logo or something like that that you want on the scope. It's interesting, somebody actually sent us a question about that, asking if we could do that. Um, oh, okay. So there's a, somebody sent a question in, if you wanna find that, we can credit them with it. But yeah, somebody asked if we can send in an image and get that laser engraved on our scope. Mm. Absolutely. So yeah. there is a fee. It's uh, it's it's uh, I believe it's eighty dollars to render the image. Yeah, so we, um, we so got we'll to set up. Yeah. Basically, what happens is our guys downstairs have to take that image and make it so that our laser can read it and then mm -hmm. actually engrave it onto a, a scope. So absolutely, we can do that. Uh, we've done company logos. We've done actual images of different, you know animals and stuff that we just don't have in our repertoire so if yeah. you go online and don't see a, an image you want engraved but you you, you see one that you actually like mm -hmm. shoot it to us in an email contact us we'll definitely see if we can do it if we can render it we'll engrave it on a scope for you yeah we got we got some guys down there that are pretty handy with the uh, the Photoshop and the illustrator and getting stuff set up for the, the laser so uh, shout out to Eric down there he's he's the, the magician that makes all that stuff come to life on the laser. We're also doing the custom ballistic dials too, the CDS dials. So that's one thing we wanted to talk about that we, I, I feel like we can't talk about CDS enough, right? And like how well this system works and really um, how easy it is, right? So you buy a scope, it has the CDS uh, uh, description in the name. So you know it's CDS compatible, right? Uh, when you buy that scope, you get one free dial and you basically, you can go online, you give us your ballistics uh, muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficient, uh, type of bullet, grain, all that good stuff. And we're going to make you a custom dial for those specific ballistics, for your specific rifle. Um, highly suggest you chronograph to get the, that data, but uh, you can uh, work off the box information too. That works totally fine. So uh, we'll, we'll make a dial, send it to you, and the installation is actually really easy. And that's one thing, we've talked about CDS before. I don't think we've showed how easy the installation is. So No, it's actually super simple. Here, so Right, so we got this awesome burnt bronze uh, Cerakoted scope here, so. Pretty simple, uh, so for instance, this right here, we're dealing with the uh, zero lock dial. You yep. basically insert your Allen wrench, now, loosen now, up three set screws. Here's the thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is kind of how I do it. So. I will, I will zero the rifle first, zero the scope to the rifle with just the standard stock dial on there. And once I get to my zero, be it a, a 100 yard, 200 yard, whatever I've stipulated for the dial, then I'll put the dial on. Yeah, is absolutely. That, so yeah, the okay. first thing you wanna do is like, we get a lot of questions about, you know, is you know I need my dial. I need my dial so I can start using my rifle. Yeah. You no. absolutely don't need your dial to start using the rifle. The for scope sure. is 100% usable right out of the box. So the dial that it comes on is gonna be a standard MOA dial, whether it's a VX3i, a VXR, um, or you yeah. know, one of these VX6s, uh, the HDs, or the VX5 HDs. They're standard MOA dials, mm -hmm. and you take that, you mount it up, take it out to the range, zero it in. You can even use it to practice a little bit if you want. Mm -hmm. um, but once it's zeroed, you just reset the dial back to your zero point and call us or send it in on the website um, we'll get your dial made up. And when you get your dial, it's as simple as loosening three set screws like I'm yeah. doing here. It, it is literally just three set screws. It's so easy. And uh, so it comes right off. 
And this new dial that has all your information is going to have your ballistic information up top. I think Scotty's going to zoom in quick there for you to see, you know, you can see what it looks like. Has your yardage marks on the side. Um, so this one was designed for, uh, well, it's a 308, uh, 165 grain fusion going 2,700 feet per second. Um, 40 feet of elevation, so not too high, at 72 degrees. That seems like a high temperature, but maybe they're shooting down in the desert somewhere, maybe in <laughs> Death Valley. About 40 feet elevation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Down there. <laughs> right. So, and we have 100 yards zero. So it starts at one, goes all the way to 700 yards. So I'll give you that. So once you have your dial, you remove the other one. The scope's already on your rifle. It's zeroed at 100 yards. You just take this dial, basically just plop it on. Yep. And you'll feel, you can kind of spin it, and when that zero lock, uh, yeah, so when, when the pin goes into the groove, you'll definitely feel it. So you'll see it'll basically pop out just like that. Mm -hmm. You see, he, he's, he's shaking. <laughs> grab that and you just... Pressure's, want, pressure's on. Scratch the scope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Scott's scope that he found. I know. Uh, we, and that's a nice... So this burnt bronze, too, just talk about that. That's been a really popular color that people have uh, um, uh, requested from us. Uh, shout out to Browning. They got their X-Bolt Hell's Canyon. <clears throat> it's done up in that same color. A lot of guys and, and gals have been wanting to match the scope to the rifle. And when you have that match set, it looks it looks really slick. It looks really good. So this is obviously a black dial on top of this scope. But when you order a burnt bronze scope, uh, the custom shop will send up extra dials in burnt bronze mm, yeah, so that they can, uh, they can get those back. And when so you're going to get an original MOA dial if you didn't submit your ballistics with that custom shop scope. And when you're ready to call in for your dial, you just let us know that you have a burnt bronze scope from us. We'll send you a burnt bronze custom engraved dial. Yep. Um, so cool. That that was the installation, honestly. So now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now you're ready to go. You're ready to rock and roll. Um, so you can go, you know, all the way up to, uh, you so know, 700 like, yards. Uh, yep. yep, 700 yards on the dial on this one. It's awesome. So uh, super easy. Range, boom, 700 yards, turn, shoot, dead on. Um, great system. Uh, works really good with all our range finders. Uh, you, can't, you can't beat it. So moving along, we're going to get a little absurd here. So we, I just wanted to show this one just as kind of a, it, it's a cool, um, um, you know, uh, way to show the different stuff we can do. Obviously, a VXR one and a quarter to four patrol. I probably wouldn't put a DP Pro up top, but we have these DP uh, Pro uh, ring top mounts now. These are actually this start out in the custom shop and is now becoming a, a production item. Uh, I think they're shipping in September here. So, a lot of interest on this. Uh, I, I know Eric Easy Dow. He's been running one for a long time on his gun. Loves it. People are always asking questions about it. Uh, they'll be shipping soon. Uh, but for the meantime, you can get them through the uh, through the custom shop, right? Yes. Um, so pretty cool. Um, uh, going along this VXR, we got a, a level on here too. This is something we're thinking about doing. This is a great example of in the custom shop we get to we get to dream a little bit. We get a little to bit test, of freedom. A little bit of freedom here and there. So we get to dream up, you know, different stuff like this. Uh, a, a level that works off that same ring top mounting system. Maybe we'll make it, maybe we won't, I don't know, we'll see. Um, going along, we got zero lock adjustments, something that doesn't come stock on a VXR, right? Yeah, so most people, when you get a CDS style, you're gonna get the standard one. Yep. It'll just come with the zero stop. Uh, after you order your custom dial, you put your zero stop on there and it'll stop every time you return to zero. Mm -hmm. um, we found a lot of people are using these guys, especially to come in and out of scabbards if you're on a horse. Um, or you've got it on your back and you want to start, you know, doing some backpacking and all of a sudden you take it off and if your dial is rotated mm -hmm. a little bit, they're kind of kind of worried about that. Even though it does take quite a bit of pressure to get these guys to rotate. Yeah, I've never had one rotate so, on me, but I do like the idea of having the, the push button, the zero lock so on there. So absolutely, right? it's something we designed. We've got a, yep. a great crew downstairs that can always, you know, think of something and if we can try yeah. and work around it and, yeah. and fix the problem, we will. Same, yeah. So this right here is something they came up with, basically a zero lock dial. It is only one turn, just like the standard CDS, mm -hmm. but now you're getting a constant return to zero and a lock. The yeah. dial, you know, just like our zero lock on the HD system, these aren't two turn, they will be one turn, but it works exactly the same. You do have to get the scopes sent in so that we can retrofit for that because it's not a stock system. We can't just send out mm -hmm. the zero lock dial for that. Um, but it is something we can do for you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great point too, just a little tangent. Uh, if you do have an older scope uh, that maybe you want to change the adjustments or the reticle or something like that, 
um, call up the custom shop. Uh, we can see what we can do for you. And you might have an option there where you can uh, retrofit a scope, you know, instead of having to buy a new one. Maybe, maybe it's a scope that has a sentimental value to it. I know uh, we had uh, someone come in, uh, I think it's a couple of years in the, uh, ago now, um, had a scope. It was a very X3 older scope that uh, his wife's father had and he wanted to bring it in, get it retrofitted with the CDS so his son could go hunting for the first time with it. So oh, yeah. again, it is kind of a family heirloom, right? But wanted to update it a little bit. Something cool we can do in the custom shop there. <clears throat> Rolling along on this scope, another feature that I really like. So VXRs and stuff, they usually come with a push button illumination, works great. But I kind of like having a dial illumination, right? And so we figured out a way to put that dial illumination on the scope. Yeah, so what we did is basically, uh and I'm, when I say we, I'm talking about much smarter people downstairs yeah. than me. JR, personally, you went down and, you know. Not yeah. at all. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm monkey with his teams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bang them on tables. Um, those guys downstairs figured out a way to replace the push button illumination with this rheostat dial. Yeah. Um, and basically, you have off in between every number, and it can go up to a seven brightness. These things are awesome. I love using these rather than the push button system. Uh, it just allows me to keep it at the brightest setting that I want it set at and then off in between so it's it's constantly there um, There is you know, there is great value in the push button stuff that it definitely serves a place But mm -hmm. when you're when you want to be on your target really really fast uh, As far as your illumination goes, this is a great option a great feature for you. Yeah, and last thing obviously It's a different color. We need to do custom anodized colors, too. So this is anodized versus Cerakote uh, We got options there, too and then the uh, the throw lever. Yeah. Yeah. So so VXRs don't usually come with a throw lever, but uh, this is a removable uh, removable one. I can speak. Um, so uh, we just threaded that top part there. You have a couple different attachments that come with the scope, and you just thread it back on there, and maybe a little blue Loctite, and now you got a throw lever on your power selector. Super yeah, handy. Yeah. So this is not the same throw lever that comes on your standard. <laughs> VXR or VX3. So when people see that, they have like a little screw in there. Mm -hmm. Don't don't remove that screw. It'll it'll mess he, up your. Yeah, he's talking about the screw in the power selector. Guys are always like, <laughs> guys are like, oh my power selector's tight. I'm gonna remove that screw. That screw has nothing to do with that. That yeah. is bad news if you take that screw out. This so. is actually something you, you can send your scope in, or you can order it from us directly, um, and then you can order this to come on your scope. But we can retrofit this onto your system. It basically comes with a couple different style of throw uh, power throw stems. And like Nick said, you just screw this off. You can put a shorter one on there, a longer one. Uh, there's one that's shaped a little like a teardrop, mm -hmm. and you can throw that on there. Or you can just take this off, and there's a small little cap that goes right over this. And it's about the same uh, profile as the original uh, throw lever that was, or the yeah, just power like selector a, that was on there. A thread so. protector to go over it. So, yeah, just wanted to walk through that, walk through Custom Shop a little bit, give you guys some insight into what we can do. And again, this all drives back to us making stuff down in the factory. I mean, it's super cool when you go down there and we got machines making parts, putting scopes together, and taking that, um, th that level of engineering and expertise and rolling it into custom scopes that we can make you know, specifically for someone. So uh, a super, super cool option to have. And again, totally sets us apart from, uh, from the competition there. So uh, we're gonna do, uh, we're, we're gonna move on. So part of this too is, you know, throughout all these live streams, you guys, uh, everyone, you ask a lot of great questions and sometimes we don't always get to them, right? Uh, because we're talking about a certain topic, we're talking about rangefinders, binocular, uh, you or know, we just go scopes, off tangent. or we go off tangent. Well, actually, this is about going off tangent, right? So we just got a bunch of different random questions here. We're gonna roll through them. Uh, so keep submitting questions. We'll try to get through them. And uh, so here we go. So Cropper77 on uh, IG, uh, what binos would you recommend for bow hunting whitetails uh, and to use out west? Uh, simple, especially out here. I'd either go with the uh, 10 by 42 Pro Guides or our new uh, Sani Ams, the 10 by 42s. They're amazing. I don't like a lot of overpowered binoculars. I know we have like 12s and 15s, but out here, uh, especially in the Oregon coast, we've got a lot of thick timber and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I think the 10 powers work great. Uh, they're just enough magnification and they're they're very, very clear or crystal clear. Yeah, ten, 10 powers are a great middle ground if you're gonna be going some different places. But if you're gonna go out west uh, and maybe more like a high desert scenario, man, check out those new uh, BX5 Sandy Ams. Uh, we got them in 12 and like the 15, like you mentioned. It, they are 
the best binoculars I think we've ever oh, made. Okay. And the eye boxes on the Sani Ams, uh, a lot of times guys will experience uh, eye fatigue, right? If you're on glass for a long time, you're searching around, your eyes start to get really tired because um, because of the prescription stuff. We worked really hard with these to make sure that um, that you can glass all day, right? Because if you're not glassing, you might be missing opportunities out there in the field. Uh, and plus, you don't want to be out there with a headache, you know, all the time, I, yeah, and that kind of I've stuff. I've stopped taking a spotting scope out with me now and pretty yeah. much just use the 15 power Sandy Ams if I'm going to be glassing long range. Yep. I set those up on a tripod and you can sit behind those all day. Yeah, even even talking about like um, uh, PRS matches and stuff, we actually shot one. Uh, we were using a 12 power binocular instead yeah. of a spotting scope. Uh, it's, it's just enough, right? You don't want to carry a spotting scope around, but you got a pair of glasses. It works great. So, good question. Um, David uh, Schultz, what is your military discount? You being a retired Marine, maybe you could take that one. Not retired, but I, I did get out of the service. So it's eight years. You yeah. retire at like 25. Oh, okay. So, you know, that's <laughs> 20. much I know. Um, no worries. Yes, we offer a great military discount. So, it's 45% off our MSRP listing. And you can actually go online now instead of having to send in all your credentials via a fax or anything like that to get vetted. Now you can go online, loophole.com, click under the uh, loophole core VIP programs. You just click on those tabs, it'll walk you right through how to get signed up for that. They'll still vet you. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're not giving, you know, there's people out there that always claim they're veterans and stuff like that, but we want to make sure we're actually supporting the, the veterans who, you know, stand up and defend this country. And it's awesome. You get you just click on there once you're once you're signed up and vetted. All you have to do is order online. Uh, you, you get your price and their the original price and your price will pop up and yep. you just click order and we'll get it and submit it and get you taken care of. Yeah, that new process is really slick. Uh, before you had to call in and it would take some time and now like you say you go online, submit it and then shop online too. So a uh, great way of doing that. Um, so uh, thank you everyone out there for your service. It's the, the least we can do, offer you a, a, a discount like that. So um, CJ, uh, CJ Jones 11, is Loophole going to produce more optics uh, in a silver finish? Uh, that, since we're talking about custom shop, that's a great segue back into the custom shop a little bit, right? Yes, yeah, so basically what you see here on the table, as far as the VX5 HD, the VX6 HD, uh, the VX3Is, yeah, we can do those in a silver finish. Um, we just, we found it's a lot more productive and manageable to run those silver finishes and like gloss scopes through the custom shop. Uh, we can pay much more attention to detail on each one of those, especially because the finishes are very, you know, if there's a slight mishap on one of those, you're gonna be able to see it. It's not like a black scope where it kind of hides the finish. So what we wanna do is make sure we control that whole process from start to finish and make sure the scope comes out from the custom shop yeah. looking you know, brand new and as shiny as possible. Yeah, I mean, we, we offered silver and gloss scopes for a long time. It, it was just, a, it, it was kind of a sales decision. There wasn't a lot of demand anymore for those. Um, most people just go to a matte black scope if they're just gonna choose a, a scope. but we still want to give everyone the option to get a gloss or silver or a custom finish scope. So like JR was saying, the custom shop is the place to uh, get a custom finish scope if you want it to. Maybe you got a stainless uh, steel you know, action or something like that that you want to match, uh, uh, something like that. Uh, we can help you out for sure. So good question. Uh, this is the loaded question right here. So Parker Sargent, uh, what differentiates your optics uh, from other brands such as Vortex? And I, I kind of already touched on it before, but it is the level of precision and engineering and doing everything in house. Like I, I, um, I'm fortunate enough I get to do the tours too here sometimes, and I get to you know walk people around and and they are amazed at the hands-on level that's going on downstairs. Literally, if we if we can keep it in the building, we keep it in the building. I mean, all the way to making tools to make the scope parts, making the tools to put the scopes together making all the scope parts. I mean, it, the, the level of attention to detail that goes into making these things is pretty incredible. They are precision optical instruments uh, that are built to, to crazy standards as far as testing goes. So uh, to me, the, it, it just separates it that we're doing everything ourselves. So uh, we're not getting a product that we say has come in from a manufacturing facility somewhere else 
and we trusted that they looked at you know all our prints and were you know um, looking at the uh, uh, calibrating the machines all the time and stuff like that are they you know you just get a finished product you can do some couple tests on it and call it good uh, the other thing too that really sets us apart I, I will say you know because we do import some stuff too the the binoculars the range finders some of the spotting scopes uh, the cool thing is that if if it goes on a rifle and you're gonna pull the trigger it comes out of this factory yeah, we right built here. we build it here right here in Oregon but for the OEM stuff that we do import, we just don't drop ship it from uh, whatever our partner, our manufacturer to the store. So the stuff is actually gonna come here. We're going to do our quality inspection, validate it, look at it before we send it out. Because even if it is produced somewhere else, it says loophole on it, it has to meet that certain level of quality, right? Um, and you know, we haven't been in business you know, 112 years, been making scopes since 1947 because we uh, uh, skimp on quality and skimp on no, make, making scopes. The right? other thing, I mean, the first, let's just, let's just differentiate right now. You can't call Vortex and get a burnt bronze scope. Probably not. <laughs> you can't call Vortex and get one custom Cerakoted in, in their finish. Yeah. Yeah, back, back to the custom shop. That's a great differentiator, right? So you know, because we because we make our stuff here, as far as our scopes, uh, our Delta Point Pros, anything that goes on a firearm made here in this factory, yeah, we can go downstairs and pick those parts and get them all seracoded, yeah. get everything put together, and we can control that quality and then get it out to you. Yeah. One other thing too, I just want to you know, it's cool too that. Um, we, we employ all, you know, 700 people here. There's a lot of people yeah. at the factory. And obviously not everyone's a hunter and shooter, but I would say probably half of them are, right? So when you're talking to people and you're talking about the product, they have a real relationship to the product, right? Even the guys down on the machine shop floor who are just making parts, um, you know, uh, they're talking about their hunt that they just went on or they went out shooting and they're super excited about the product. And I think that just plays into, again, the culture here and the level of quality and all, the, all that good stuff. I could go on and on about it. I could gush about it for hours, but we'll move on to the next yeah. question. So uh, uh, Antarctic Champ, uh, can I get a Horus reticle in my VX5 2 to 10? So that goes back to what we kind of talked about with Custom Shop, where sometimes we can't put this in that, right? It just doesn't work. Yeah, so the Horus reticles are designed for front focal plane scopes. Obviously, yep. that's your first problem right there. It's a VX5. Um, it's going to be a second focal plane. So it's out right off the bat. But the other thing that we have to realize is that the Horus reticles that we have and that we put into scopes are designed to sub correctly and that to be used properly in scopes that have already have a, a horse reticle inside of them. So if you have a if you had a Mark IV, say uh, eight and a half to twenty five, and it's got a TMR reticle in there, but you wanted to install a Horus H fifty eight because that was something we offered back in the day. Uh, that Mark IV ERT came with one. That is something you could send your Mark IV into us, um, pay for the reticle install, and we can change that out. Yeah. So that's something we can do because that that scope originally was designed to have you know, an H58 or a horse reticle installed into it. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think the VX5 2 to 10, can you get an impact reticle with the, uh, I, th I think there might be I an impact there, yeah, reticle available. I think there's available. an impact in, so. in that one, which is an MOA second focal plane Yeah, reticle. It's, it's like a, it's a grid style reticle, so that might be an option you want to look at. It's uh, maybe we'll get you to the, where you need to go there. So uh, Elliot's air gunning, thanks for uh, sending us a question. Are you guys planning on making a line of scopes dedicated to high power air rifles? Um, we're always looking at opportunities. We don't have anything in the mix right now. Funny you mentioned that. I was just talking to one of our, our, our lead uh, electrical engineers yesterday about it because he's getting into air gun. He just bought a new air gun and he's getting super into it and uh, actually got one of our, um, uh, he took a VX6 uh, HD, the 4 to 24, mm -hmm. took it down to the custom shop, had the parallax adjusted down yep. uh, so that you can do really close focus. So while we don't, uh, we don't make a specific air rifle uh, scope. Our, our scopes can go on air rifles, and through the custom shop, you can do a couple things to make them more advantageous for you know what 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 you use them for on air rifles. Yeah, absolutely. Right? All of our scopes are uh, obviously rated to go on air rifles and and take that you know that pneumatic uh, spring system recoil. That being said, we do have the uh, the VX3i six and a half to twenty by forty uh, EFR, which is very very popular amongst all air gunners and small bore shooters. It already focuses to, uh, to below 
Um, I believe it, it'll focus all the way down to 10 yards and, and out to infinity. So that's a really good option for you. And yeah. We can always change up the reticles in those to fit you as far as uh, any kind of small target dots uh, or different, you know, different reticles that we have available in that scope. That's another one specifically uh, back in the day that people definitely use for air gunning. In fact, it used to say air rifle on the gold. That's right. Yeah. 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 It did up until a few years ago, I think. So um, Quentin, excuse me, 2024, is loophole going to come out with range finding binoculars? Uh, yeah, yeah, soon. So you'll, you'll, you'll see them. We're working on it. The thing is, we, again, like loophole, we're not, oh, I always, uh, the Mark V HD is a great example. 5 to 25, that's not a groundbreaking uh, focal length by any, you know, stretch of the imagination. But it is the best of 5 to 25 out there, in my opinion, because we took our time, came out with it, right? Same thing with range finding binoculars. When you, you, you think when you stick a binocular and a range finder together that, well, that's, that should be easy, right? The problem is like the the level of optical clarity that we expect in a binocular and the ability to shoot out a laser and receive it back those are difficult to do so uh we're gonna do it we're gonna do it right so moving on um dan h uh, or dan hahn excuse me 65 what's the current turnaround on cds dials i know there's been a little bit of a pain point talking about cds dials i think right now we're at the two month turnaround right uh, yeah, but it's getting better day by day so so we did have a we did have a little snafu with one of our machines going down yep that being said the you know the executives here they jumped all over it we've got two brand new machines that are pumping out dials right now i believe they're running almost 23 to 22 hours on dials yeah we got multiple shifts going, shifts going. we got two machines making dials now brand new machines so uh we've heard you guys we're ramping up uh they just proven to be so popular right and because of those reasons that we talked about the simplicity the easiness of it um um, so super popular bear with us we're gonna get caught back up real soon and uh, get you guys your dial so we're, we're totally working on it um, Tyler Denny too what scope would you recommend for a moose hunt using a 300 maybe say moose hunt usually he says about 50 to 300 yards right very very great co uh, good question I honestly would recommend our VX5 HD um, me personally probably a 2 to 10 I've got but my eyes are a little younger. They, they still function really, really well. Uh, if you need a little bit more magnification, the VX5 3 to 15. Great scopes. Uh, you know, they got the two turn zero lock system where you get the free CDS on that as well. So it's something I would definitely look into. Yeah, probably lower magnification range, 2 to 10. Uh, you, could even do, you could even do like a 1 to 6, like a VX6 HD 1 to 6 too, would be a great option for moose there. So uh, good luck with that. I, I've, that's on my bucket list to do as a moose hunt. That would be, that would be super cool. So um, Sandy Troy, uh, do you guys have other buildings or offices other than in Oregon? So no, that's when people come do a tour, they're like, oh, where is this? Do you have the, the, there's one building, there is one loophole, all 700 of us work here. Caveat to that, there is a distribution center about uh, five miles away, 10 miles away. And we got a crew of guys and gals working there. They're shipping out all the products. We just don't have space inside the facility to store all this stuff. Yeah, so it gets but, made here. But li over. literally here, executive offices, finance, marketing, sales, manufacturing, all the machines downstairs, it's all in one building. So it's, it's really cool because I think in this day and age, that's kind of... Uh, it, it's not the norm anymore to have all that stuff. You know, you have your- We're surrounded by a Nike campus. It literally sprawls yeah, all around yeah, us. Yeah, Nike's right over by us and stuff like that. So yeah, everything's here. It, it, it's pretty neat. Um, let's see, running on down the list. Uh, Ryan Kupek, are you able to put a custom CDS dial on a Freedom Rimfire? Absolutely. Um, that uh, the, the Freedom, the three to nine by 40, just the regular one comes with the CDS. Uh, but that Rimfire specific one, if you want a CDS on there, custom shop, JR is your guy to talk to. Go on the website, call them up, and they can get you hooked up. So, great question. Uh, Chad Forrest, how much will elevation change the effectiveness of a CDS dial? Like going from, say, 3,000 to 8,000 feet. I'll let JR answer this one. He's the expert on, on this stuff. So. so, that's one where it's kind of tricky. Obviously, with faster rounds like a 6.5 Creedmoor, a 300 Wind Mag, something like that. Uh, out to about 500 yards, you're really not gonna see a huge difference uh, as far as elevation and temperature change. Uh, your, your time of flight of that round at that distance, 500 yards and in, um, it's so fast 
especially if you're going, you know, 2,700 feet a second or anything higher, you're probably going to get anywhere from, I think the max that we've calculated is about four, four inches off of your, your actual dope um, if everything was dead on. Now, that being said, if you've got to slow around like a 450 Bushmaster or something like that, and it's, or 4570, and it's going a lot slower, you know, you're just hucking bowling balls downrange, that's something you definitely want to make sure your altitude and temperature are matching up exactly. So for me, if I'm using a 6.5 Creedmoor and I'm going from, you know, my dial says 2,000 feet of elevation, 50 degrees, but I'm taking this thing to Colorado and it's 8,000 feet, um, I, would, I would be very, very comfortable in taking a 500 yard shot with the data and the dope that's on my dial. I know that uh, it won't really affect it at that distance. That being said, anything out past that, five, six, you know, your six, seven, eight, 900 yard shots, uh, one, I'm probably not taking that shot uh, on an animal, <laughs> but two, um, know your dope. You know, distances like that where, you know, the slightest step of an animal is going to is gonna be the difference between a clean ethical kill and something where you're tracking that animal down the rest of the night and you may not find it. You want to make sure that you know your data and your dope and yeah. make sure you take that shot properly. Yeah. The general rule I like to tell people is if, if they are concerned about that, the, the elevation difference, I, I usually give them a 2,000 plus or minus foot window. So say if you had that dial, like you said, at 2,000 feet, I'm good down to sea level, I'm good up to 4,000 feet. If you really don't want to leave the chance, you know, go ahead and get another dial. It doesn't hurt. Um, it's 80 bucks for an extra dial, 80, right? Yep, $80, $80 for dollars. an extra dial and uh, you can have it at that different elevation you can make sure that you know you, you got everything um, dialed in and ready to go and then um, yeah you'll you'll be good to go then a uh, question from the name of the box will you guys take me to dinner uh, depends on where we're going so uh, uh, maybe are you maybe, coming here are you coming here are we going there uh, is it a steak dinner or are we going the jack-in-the-box or I mean what's the dress code I need particulars man I can't just I can't yeah. just jump into like that it's a big commitment I don't know if we can do that so um, Chris Wright, 375, is it possible to get the Impact 29 reticle in the VX5 3 to 15 by 56? So not, yes, absolutely. So it's offered in R50. It's also offered in our VX5 3 to 15 by 44. Yep. The 56 is the illuminated version one. It's got a 56 millimeter objective. We can put that in there for you. Um, the only thing that you may lose functionality of the illuminated reticle. So I would definitely look into that one. I'd have to double check on that for you. Yeah. Um, it's, I have so many reticles and SKUs and everything <laughs> going through. <laughs> we have to keep in, in, you know, in our head. Yeah. Sometimes we actually have to go and actually look at the data and, and our paperwork so we can yeah. definitely answer that. But you, you guys know how many scopes we make and then you, you load in a bunch of modifications on top of those scopes and you, sometimes we're, we like to act like we're pretty smart, but sometimes, man, we get questions. We're just like, I don't know. I got to go check my spreadsheet. So that's one of the ones. I know it'll fit in there. Uh, we just got to verify that it'll be illuminated and everything will work right. But uh, uh, maybe call us up, send us an email, and, and check on that. And then we can do a little deeper digging on that for sure. Um, Mike uh, uh, Honor, uh, do we still get a core hat if we're featured as a loophole core post? Yes, you absolutely do. So. If, uh, if you post a picture, say on Instagram or one of the social you know, media, uh, uh, Facebook or whatever, tag us. And if we repost your picture as a loophole core post, you do absolutely get a hat. So uh, make sure to tag us on all your cool pictures, especially now hunting season coming up and cool this? stuff. like No, you don't get one. So yeah, actually I'm gonna need that shirt back too. After when you're done with it, so. um, let's see, Sean Caulfield next week. Uh, I'm getting a Marlin 1894 CSBL 357. Wow. Uh, do you have any good recommendations for a, uh, a lever, action. lever action? Yeah, optic. Uh, and how do uh, I find out? The oh, the cost, cost for the coating. Things. Yeah, got it. So, um, so yeah. What would you put on a lever action? Actually, well, I have seen. Uh, the DP Pro actually, and I think we have a Marlin mount too, specifically for that. Uh, so the DP Pro is actually a really great option for uh, a lever action rifle like that. So is this little one to four. Yeah, and, and the one to four too, right? Yeah. Uh, is uh, your eye relief, uh, is it a little bit further away? Do you need an intermediate eye relief not, for not, not on not, not on that one? Yeah, not okay. on something like that. Uh, unless it's, and I could be wrong here, if it's a top loading rifle, uh, or a top eject yeah. lever action, then uh, yeah, you'd need something way, way forward. 
like a scout scope system. Yeah, I don't think that one is. I think you get a, get away with the standard eye relief. So yeah, VXR one and quarter four, Freedom uh, one and quarter four. Uh, any any of those would work. Uh, if you just want a red dot, the DP Pro is a great way to go too. Super versatile. As far as the cost for coatings, that's a really good question. Basically, what the custom shop does is. Um, we would basically take the retail cost of the scope and add 150 for the Cerakote. Um, and so that's that's your cost for the coatings if you want it in a, in a custom Cerakote finish. Uh, if you're looking like uh, gloss or silver, those are a little bit more spendy. I think you're looking at about $200, 250 depending on what we're doing on the scope. It's just a little bit more hands-on, especially trying to polish all those parts. Um, and so we have to, you know, there's a little bit more involved going into those scopes, but that's your cost. Figure whatever retail is, and add 150 to 250 and you'll be in the ballpark. Cool. All right, uh, Reese McKinney, I hope I said that right, on Instagram. Uh, can you guys touch base on warranty info and whether or not location of purchase uh, matters? So uh, absolutely location of purchase does not matter. If it's, if it's a loophole product, uh, it's covered by that loophole lifetime guarantee right. If it's, if it's a scope or something like that. We have a two year uh, warranty on the, uh, the range finders and stuff like that, but on the scopes, lifetime guarantee, doesn't matter where you bought it. Um, same with the binoculars and the spotting scopes, lifetime guarantee. Um, actually, you don't have to be the original owner too. You, yeah. could, you could go- Pawn shop finds or yeah, pawn, we get them all the time. Somebody right. buys a, hey, I bought this scope at a pawn shop and uh, you know the tech guys answer this question quite a bit. <laughs> I bought this scope at a pawn shop. I wanna make sure everything's working great. Can I send it into you guys? What's the warranty? Yeah, send it into us. It's, yeah. it's still covered for life. It's a lifetime warranty on our loophole with scopes. Yeah, and I think that's key to, um, we always talk about this. We offer a lifetime warranty. We were, we were kind of the pioneers of the lifetime warranty. We, we were the first ones to do it. A lot of people think that other people were, but we were just not as- uh, We didn't we, have to we, advertise. We weren't advertising, <laughs> right? We, but we, w the thing is about us is we also guarantee performance, which is a really important aspect of that uh, uh, warranty conversation because the warranty is great uh, if they send you a new product, but if that product doesn't work when you're out in the field, if you're on a hunt, I mean, imagine if you spent two years planning something and all this money and you went out and your gear goes down, your scope goes down, that warranty does you no good. So guaranteeing performance for the lifetime of the product is really what we're talking about with that warranty. But yeah, we know how we make stuff and that's why we're gonna stand yeah, behind it. Yeah, I mean, it, right? you've got Josh Richard, our supervisor in the custom shop. Oh, name, getting ready, name dropping. Getting ready to go out on a hunt in Montana. He's been, you know, five years in the making, four years in the making, something like that. And, you know, he's got a VX5 on his, uh, the VX5 HD on his rifle. And the reason he's got that is because, yeah. you know, you wait five, four or five years for a hunt, you wanna make sure you're not, you know, you don't get out there and your scope's not gonna work. Yep, yep, uh, awesome. So, uh, Dallas, uh, oh, Actually, I, I'm, I got one question on my personal Instagram that someone asked right last night. Um, they asked, are you gonna uh, talk about what the first, or one of the first duplexes, what was made out of, um, or reticles? Yep. So what they're getting at is actually, uh, back in the 50s, so the engineers were, you know, we started making scopes in 47, we got pretty, you know, we're getting better at it. The engineers were looking for a material to make the reticles out of, right? And it, obviously back then, not, not as advanced as it is now. Um, and they landed on black widow webbing. And yeah. people look at me like, you're, you're crazy when I, when I say that, right? No, nope, there was there a guy was downstairs. Literally a room with black widows and a guy who his job was to milk the, uh, the, the black widows, get the webbing out, and then spool it you know, into that real fine strand. Yeah. And we still get scopes back you know, for repair, like we we're talking about, that still have that black widow uh, webbing in there, which is pretty amazing. Needless to say, that didn't last. I think it lasted uh, maybe four or five years. He got at the bit most. a couple times. I, I <laughs> heard that they got loose <laughs> once. Yeah, so probably not a good idea to have a ton of black widows uh, on purpose in your building. Um, so we have much better options now. Uh, but uh, I cool question, little tidbit of history there you can share with your friends. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, Dallas the Wander. Uh, it has a VX5 HD. He says the crosshairs seem to be a little crooked from the turrets. Will this affect my accuracy? Uh, so we do have a, you know, a tolerance built into our, our reticles, which is one degree plus or minus. So mm -hmm. from direct center, you'd be off one to your left or right. Uh, that being said, if it's more than that, it's definitely something we want to take a look at. You can send it into us. We'll get it all taken care of for you on the warranty. Um, yeah, that's why that's why it's guaranteed. Send it in because we'll take care of that. Well, the other thing I want to mention though is um, 
you know, with that tolerance being built in, there's also tolerances built in on your dial. So if you're leveling it off of the dial, you know, the tolerances that are stacked into this may transmit into the scope as well. So try and take the dial off, level it from the actual adjustment underneath the scope or underneath the dial, then go ahead and put the dial back on. And if you still have that cant in there, send it into us uh, or give us a call. Our tech guys will walk you through. It's a simple process. You just mail it into us. We get you all taken care of. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Benny T27, are you guys coming out with a micro dot anytime soon? We're always constantly looking at the next innovation, the next iteration, right? We, uh, uh, we got technologies that we're working on, so stay tuned. I can't say anything, uh, but stay tuned. Uh, just Josh, uh, with a bunch of numbers on the end there. Uh, why can't I order directly from the Loophole website? Well, you, you can now if you qualify for one of our VIP programs. So like JR talked about a little bit military. earlier, the military fed mill discount. We have a professional guide outfitter discount, uh, a, a gold ring. If you, any of you guys out there and gals work at uh, a gold ring retailer or something like that, we have discounts for you. So go on the website. Um, what did, what was it under? It was like loophole core. The loophole core. Right, loophole core tab side. on left side and side. Go see if there's a, um, if you qualify for one of those, submit an application, and uh, that's the way you can order directly from us. So, um, will the USA, oh, uh, Alpha Wilkes really like that uh, USA Cerakoted scope that was on the Instagram story yesterday, asked when that would be available. We don't. We don't make those in big batches, right? We don't have a limited time no, run that's why or anything. Custom. We're custom, <laughs> but you can totally call the custom shop up and order that one uh, specifically, that style, right? Yeah, of, if you uh, want a if you want yeah. a VX Freedom done up in uh, you know the, the the American flag motif, we can do that for you. Yep. Um, great question here, old uh, old iron. I have an ancient Mark IV Ultra M116 power. You, sir are a lucky dude. That's an awesome scope. Don't do anything with it. Just keep it, mount it on your rifle, and then just put it on the wall because those things are <laughs> phenomenal. And uh, you're asking if we can Cerakote it? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Send it in. We'll, we'll replace it, and I'll hold on to that one for you. <laughs> yeah, Jar Jarrah will take it We'll get you a Cerakote scope. Um, um, I don't think, what have, what have we been saying about uh, Cerakoting scopes that have already been? So if a scope leaves the factory, uh, we can't change the coatings on it once it's already left. So if you get a scope and you buy, you know, say you buy a scope at Cabela's or you buy a scope, you know, from your buddy and it's in the uh, matte black, that's not something we can take in-house again and then break down and Cerakote it. A lot of, I mean, it, it comes down to where are we gonna put all of those parts and pieces yeah. and, and not lose something for your scope. You know, we have to take the complete scope apart. Yeah. We have to then, um, you know, uh, bead blast the material make sure that we get down to the you know get that other finish off of there put the new finish on there and then we have to reassemble all that stuff and it's a long painstaking process yeah. so uh, the only scopes that we Cerakote are scopes that are purchased directly through the custom shop you know from us new scopes yeah um, but uh I probably wouldn't. I I probably wouldn't coat don't, that sixteen don't power. Don't touch that sixteen power. <laughs> Actually, like, well, you could rattle can it and then make it look very, you know. Yeah, but that that is an awesome scope. If you guys don't know, Google Loophole Ultra Scope. So that's the scope back in the '80s when the Army came to us. And before then, little history lesson here. Uh, before then, there weren't really tactical rifle there scopes. There was a Mark IV or a Mark anything. Yeah, that's the predecessor, right? So the Army came to us. We worked with them to. Uh, make this scope that is, is is a beast. It is we they used to call them jump proof scopes, yeah. um, uh, and it, uh, it it's still I think even up to the late nineties, early two thousands, guys were still using well, those he used, those he temp used powers. The word, he used the word ancient, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, it is it is very very old scope. Yeah, but it's just a testament to the quality that we build into our scopes. Yeah, those that are scope great. That scope is still scope. rocking and rolling. He yeah. wants to know if he can Cerakote. Yeah, those, those are good. Uh, Black Iron Gunner, shout out to my boy there on Instagram. How many hours go into producing a DPU Pro? You know, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but it's 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 quite a bit. And that plays into the, um, uh, people are always like, well, loophole costs more, costs more. It's, it's the level of craftsmanship that goes into putting that DP Pro together, right? Um, when I take people downstairs, like I, I did a tour yesterday, and people expect to go into the assembly room and see a lot of like robotic arms and stuff, putting stuff together. It's a lot of hand fitting and making sure that each of these are uh, exactly right though. So, so I can't give you exact time. It does take a, a good amount of time to put one together though. Great question. Um, 
Ryan McNally, any scopes going to have digital dope compensation available? I know that's kind of a big thing. You see more and more electronics coming into the optics, right? Uh, when are we gonna do that? The problem is making those optics rugged enough to pass to our Punisher test, yeah, our impact I mean. test, right? Electronics don't necessarily like getting hit with a lot of energy really hard. So um, we're always constantly looking at stuff. Uh, I, I know it's something that you know is getting started out there, but again, it has to meet that level of lupal quality before we're gonna put it out there, so yeah. Um, do, 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 do. What's uh, Ibarra4239 on Instagram, what's a good scope to put on my AR-10? Uh, so, it's, it's almost anything, right? Uh, yeah, AR-10, absolutely. you're gonna wanna reach out there a bit further, right, than your So standard. I would uh, definitely recommend, I mean, the Mark V 3.6 to 18 is specifically designed for a that, gas gun. I mean, that thing is option. just phenomenal. Um, it's also small and compact, lightweight. It'll fit on any bolt gun. Um, but that, a Mark VI 3 to 18 is going to work perfectly. Um, anything around, you know, the, the 10 power or a 4.5 to 14 power as well in the VX3i lines, those would be great options if you're just looking for, um, you know, a cost-effective second focal plane version. Yep. Good. Uh, Rick Raznick, can you do military units on the dials? Absolutely. Yep. I think we've done a couple of those before. Uh, so. Uh, can do that. Cost of a Cerakote job from Conan76 Malts on Instagram. Goes anywhere from, what? what's the range, I guess? Uh, basically, you know, from a, for a standard, uh, you know, one color, you're looking at 150. If we're doing multiple colors and patterns, uh, it could be anywhere up to 250. I mean, if you want to get so extreme that you've got 19 different colors on this scope <laughs> um, and we're doing like a digital pattern, you just need it. Uh, I mean, yeah, we can do it. You can turn a Volkswagen Bug into a Porsche, but it's gonna cost. <laughs> yeah, so, so anywhere from 150 upwards, depending on the uh, complexity of the, uh, uh, of the pattern, right? So uh, that gives you a good starting point though. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, let's see, uh, let's see, um, oh, what do you recommend an AR-10 lightweight scope uh, purposely for multi-gun? I want at least eight power. Uh, so that's a good question there. Um, the cool thing about all our scopes, they are all lightweight. I mean, if you pick up a loophole versus a competitor scope, uh, the loophole is gonna be the lightest weight scope. We do that for a couple of reasons. There's a performance reason there for sure. Uh, but if I was gonna put an AR-10 uh, lightweight scope, uh, maybe like a, a two to ten, maybe yeah. something like that. The VX five two to ten be yeah. a great option with that. And if you absolutely need that one power, uh, the offset Delta Point Pro yeah. Um, yeah. would be great for the, running that red dot. Or go back to that Mark five HD with the off offset. Uh, oh, uh, we I talked about we're doing the ring top. We're also coming out with a forty five degree uh, DP Pro mount, so you can mount it down on your rail yep. too. I know a lot of a lot of people like having that ability to flip the gun sideways, right, and use the DP Pro like that, so. But I mean, if you wanna get crazy, we do have that Mark 8, one to eight CQB SS, and it is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is a great scope. Um, ba -ba -ba. Can you, uh, Todd, uh, Todd MA87 on Instagram, can you explain the difference between the standard VX uh, uh, three to nine Freedom and the VX Freedom Rimfire three to nine? Yep, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So the difference between those two is where we set the parallax. So um, you're going to get a 60 to 70 yard parallax setting on our, uh, it's actually 60 yard parallax setting on our VX Freedom rim fires. And that's just going to allow you because you're not shooting out to distances like three, four, five hundred yards. Where the standard uh, parallax setting for the VX Freedom three to nine is going to be 150 yards. And that's that great mid mid ground yep. that mid range for you to take all those shots out to distance i believe to the rim fire models uh and again I had so many models rolling around but they have the rim fire reticle in there that's like an moa yeah, reticle there's a, there's right? a rim fire tmoa or the rim fire yeah. triplex so so moa increments you can use for holdovers and they're um, calibrated at that closer distance yeah 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 so it's uh that's going to be a great option for you there uh, last question, we're running short on time. I know uh, uh, we're trying to get through as many of these as possible, but I want to hit this one really quick because I think it's important. So Krobo uh, on Instagram, so glass clarity and quality, as well as low light capabilities in the VX3i and the VX5 HD. I, I think that gets to a really great point of glass clarity within our whole line of scopes. Um, that twilight lens uh, management or twilight uh, light management system 
um, that you're going to get all the way from the VX Freedom all the way up to the VX6 HD. The, it, it comes, so we're designing all these optical prescriptions in-house. We're not just going to a lens manufacturer and going, hey, we just want a one to six, or hey, we need a one to eight. We're actually designing everything and have optical engineers on staff. And, and I think that, you know, I encourage you go look at a VX Freedom and compare it against the competitor's thousand dollar scope. And you'll be amazed at how clear that, yeah. that image is in the VX Freedom. Uh, all, all the way to the VX6 HD. And try to look at outdoors too. So I always tell people, so like this room we're in right now, a lot of fluorescent, fluorescent light, it's actually probably the worst situation you could look at optics in. Uh, these optical systems are not designed to work in this lighting situation. They're designed to work outdoors and in natural no light. In there's no deer in here, there's no targets. <laughs> I can't really shoot in here. Uh, so, um, but yeah, go outside, check them out. Uh, versus the, the VX3i versus the VX5 HD, uh, you are going to see a little bit of difference. That's what you pay for when you go up in the levels, right? Yeah, you're getting so, better, better glass, better, uh, yep. just overall better scope as far as uh, the lens coatings go. Yep. Uh, I like to tell people we don't make a bad scope, we just make better scopes. Yeah, there's good, better, best, right? I mean, that sounds cliche, but that literally is what it is. Um, You'll, you'll see, uh, to me, one of the big differences on the VX3i versus the 5HD, when you go to the 5HD and the 6HD, you get a 36 millimeter um, uh, eyepiece. So the eyepiece is actually a little larger than your standard eyepiece shape. Uh, it, the, the eye box seems a little bit bigger. And I know guys and, and, and guy, gals like that um, can you play get, a difference into it. Yeah, yeah, you get the fast focus eyepiece The as fast well. focus eyepiece, yeah. So there's some differences there. Um, but like I said, when you when you there, there's really not a bad optical system that we make all the way up to the VX6 HD, which is phenomenal in those those low light situations. So, uh, anyways, man, we rolled through a lot of questions today. So thank you everyone for submitting questions. I think we'll probably do another one of these free for alls, right? Where you just spit firing uh, questions and we're we're trying to answer them as fast as possible. Uh, I think there was a lot of good content there, a lot of good stuff. So uh, make sure to, to go on the website, sign up for the Core Insider newsletter. That lets you guys uh, know all the cool stuff that's coming out, uh, uh, all the new products. Uh, we got cool stories on there, recipes, all that kind of good stuff. Can't say enough about the Core Insider newsletter. Um, uh, really, really cool stuff there. So JR, thanks for being on.